one of the whole things, the hallmarks of this whole Brexit project is you can go back to 2016 and you can look at the type of stuff that the Leave campaign was saying and the Remain campaign was saying. And certainly one of the things the Remain campaign was saying was, look, you're talking about how amazing, quote, the economy is going to become if we sort of, you know, pull up the anchor and just sail off into the ocean blue. Well, that's not true. Look at these regions, these left behind regions, as it started to be at, at that time, um, started to take the name on before it sort of became, you know, used by the conservatives to describe these areas. And these areas were very, very much tied to the EU. They would export more to the EU. And the Brexiteers' answer was, that'll be fine because all they'll have to do is just change exporting from Europe, again, our closest trading partner. And again, trade gravity is a thing. Countries always trade with their closest partners. That they can just start trading around the world and it will be fine and we'll be this buccaneering, you know, trading nation and everything will be, you know, come up golden. It'll be, it'll be the good times again for everyone. And unfortunately, they were really allowed to pass and get away with a lot of stuff um, saying that. And partly was because economics is really hard really really hard to try and get across to your average voter the impacts of the economy because sometimes you might be talking to someone the disadvantages of having like a less one percent gdp hit and you know uh, less than one percent might sound like a very small number but you're talking billions billions of pounds there lost by the economy just on one percent and that's where the Brexiteers really took advantage of this because they took those small numbers, those small percentage numbers like the two, five, and you know, six percent, and just said, Those are tiny. Look at the potential gains. Look at how much we could gain from having a trade deal with America. That's like 40% or a trade deal with the, the, the Trans Pacific Partnership. If we get into that, that's like 30% of the growing world's GDP. Imagine if we can get into that. But of course, it's not that easy. And even then, if we do get into the CTTPP, I think that's too many Ps, um, what guarantees are we going to have that those countries on the far side of the world are going to give us, you know, change the rules for it is gives us an advantage for trading in their country? I do not think it's going to be that likely <laughs> at all. So um, today we have a very interesting report that has basically gone on to affirm what we said back in 2016, 2016 that pro-Brexit regions are now more dependent on EU exports. So let's go diving into this then. But before we do that, uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and a rotation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can work Buy Me Coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way. And like I say as well, there is the YouTube thank you button as well now. And of course, you've got the YouTube subscription where you get uh, badges, emojis, and obviously you get a free super chat a month as well. So let's go over to this with The Guardian on their story on this, with the title of pro-Brexit UK regions more dependent on EU for export report fines. And bear in mind, we've got Liz Truss, a potential candidate who will probably end up starting a trade war. So how well are these pro-Brexit regions of the UK going to fare under a trade war? So anyway, it gets into it. Uh, Brexit supporting regions in the UK are becoming increasingly dependent on the EU for their manufacturing exports, research by the trade body Made UK has found. The report, based on the quarterly manufacturing outlook data and the measuring of performance in the output, orders, employment, investment intentions, also found that the EU remains the overwhelmingly dominant destination for UK manufacturing exports. Why? Because trade gravity matters. That's not going to change just because we've left the EU. Analysis of the 2021 data by the Business Advisory Group, uh, BDO, uh, shows that 49% of British exports go to the 27-nation bloc. 
Northern Ireland, which voted against Brexit, uh, but has access to the single market, uh, courtesy of the Northern Ireland uh, Protocol, is the most heavily reliant on the EU, with 63% of all exports going across the border to the Republic of Ireland and the continent. Some of the UK regions that voted for Brexit registered the biggest increases in the share of the manufacturing import exports that went to the EU. For Wales, that figure increased from about 58 to 60 percent between 2020 and 2021. North East England reported a rise of uh, 56 percent to 58 percent, and East Midlands was up from 48 to 51, and the rest of England rose from 46 to 48. Wales was the second most reliant on the EU for exports for goods overall, followed by the North East of England and Yorkshire and the Humber. And despite the talk of global Britain, history shows us that geography is always uh, the main determinant of trade, said, Val, uh, said Verity Delvidge, the director for policy at Made UK, continuing to say that the EU was always going to remain the main destination for manufacturers who appeared to be becoming more, not less, dependent on its market, she added. The trade body has called on the government to recognise the importance of European markets and to re-establish the Brexit support fund for small and medium-sized businesses, alongside other targeted schemes to help manufacturers respond to the post-Brexit trade barriers, including customs, exports, the classification and standards compliance. And they're not going to do that because they do not want to acknowledge that fact at the moment, especially with this government and probably certainly under a trust government that will probably maintain the same as well. It has also urged the government to come up with an agreement with the EU over the Northern Ireland Protocol to avert a potential trade war. Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, who is the, uh, who is the uh, third favourite to become the new Prime Minister in the Tory leadership place, uh, tabled legislation last month to tear up parts of the protocol, of which the EU has warned it could lead to tariffs becoming imposed on a wide range of British goods. The mutual, um, the regional manufacturing outlook of 2022 reports found that the manufacturing conditions improved across all the regions and measures reflecting a bounce back from the pandemic found an above normal response for consumers to the reopening of the economy. More recently, though, figures showed the continued growth in the first half of this year, with more manufacturers expanding between the third quarter of 2021 and the second quarter of 2022. However, it warns of the potential plateau as supply issues and energy prices put a squeeze on manufacturing and consumer demand. Uh, we're saying the report last year may come to be seen as as good as it gets for manufacturers and for some time to come, given how fast the economic conditions are now weakening with major markets, the report says. So the Northeast emerged as the top performer for growth in manufacturing, reflecting the demand for pharmaceuticals and chemicals. The report warns that the region may also be vulnerable to a slowdown in performance, as it is unlikely to repeat that explosive growth seen in pharma as a result of the pandemic. The Southwest reported the weakest balance for orders with investment uh, intentions, while Wales, uh, home to Airbus, the largest uh, and the obviously a large farming sector, reported the weakest average performance for output for employment and growth. Wales was also the second most reliant on the EU market for exports after Northern Ireland, with about 60% of all its goods exported to the EU. Are we surprised about this? No, um, we absolutely should not be surprised about this at all. This was exactly what had been predicted, what had been put forward. And now... What, what what happens to these companies? What happens now that it's more difficult to trade with the EU? Because that's what these barriers have done. And the report lays it out that this is likely to be as good as it gets. And that, from what we can see, seems to be Labour's plan. Labour will come in, do some deals of like closer alignment with the EU, and then basically go, guys, look, this is Brexit. This is as good as it's going to get. Do you seriously want to continue with this farce? And to be honest, that's the best plan to go with because it doesn't matter because you've had the Conservatives in power since 2016, since the referendum, since Boris got, quote, Brexit done with a massive majority. And now Liz Truss going into bat. They could have done everything they wanted to, to, quote, get Brexit done properly. But they have chosen not to, because they know the more they diverge, the more those trade barriers increase, the more difficult it becomes for businesses, the more of an outcry there will be. 
So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, there are links to my Patreon page and an updated link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well find me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.